This is footage of what may be the oldest continuously inhabited settlement in the United States. The Hopi people came to Oribe a thousand years ago, around the time of Europe's second crusade. And there the elders set up their own form of government based on religious principles. Beyond the Pueblo's stone walls, there's a boulder with an engraving some say carries a message for all of humanity. It's known as the Prophecy Rock. One side of the carving depicts the beginning of time, when the Great Spirit gave humans instructions on how to care for creation. How to take care of plant, animal, birds, and the whole living things on this earth. According to the prophecy, Hopi elders predicted technological advances and saw them as signs that people had begun to stray from their role as caretakers of Earth. A carriage that would be pulled by animals. Pretty soon that's going to run by itself. And they said, that's automobile. We will be talking to each other through cobweb. That's a telephone line. It'd be a huge house that would be floating way up in the sky someplace, carrying people and things. Gourd full of ashes. And it's going to be so small, but it's going to be so powerful. As these great events shake the world, the Hopi elders taught that there are two potential futures for life on Earth. The upper path is one that's out of balance. It's the path of greed, war, and ecological destruction. It's a line of endless growth that continues to rise up and to the right. But then they will advance in scientific things, inventions, but they're going to destroy themselves with what they invented if they're not careful. The lower path is one of peace and harmony with nature, a return to life's original purpose, to protect Mother Earth. We are either go all out for this kind of thing and destroy ourselves, or come back, search our spiritual instructions, search ourselves within us. It's a message that indigenous educators have been trying to deliver for centuries. Are people finally starting to listen? Indigenous people protect millions of acres of land and 80% of the biodiversity left in the world. Their communities and traditions are among the most vulnerable to climate change, but they still struggle to make their voice heard. Because we took care of, of the land and made, made sure it was fertile, made sure it was green and, you know, thriving for so many thousands of years. I'm here because of the valleys of my family are going to be, the water's going to be polluted. We're not going to be able to live there. Pastor Ray Minikon is an Aboriginal leader who attended the most recent International Climate Summit in Scotland. As an Indigenous person, your hopes are shattered by the ways in which these nations actually try to convince us, deceive us into saying that we have the solutions to, to climate change when they are the ones who created it. I was told earlier today that for every one indigenous person that is here at uh, COP26 that there are two people from the fossil fuel regime. Continuam sendo teimosos querendo acreditar que somente as tecnologias inovadoras é que vão reduzir as mudanças climáticas. They are still very stubborn in recognizing and thinking that only innovation technology is can, can fix the problem to the crisis that we're facing. Minicon says that more than slashing greenhouse gas emissions or installing renewable energy, humans need to repair their relationship with Mother Earth. And that means, you know, reconciliation, not with each, only with each other and with our past and our stories and our histories, but also reconciliation with our environment, reconciliation with our creator. The, the rivers, the mountains, the, they're our family. They are brothers and their sisters, they are grandparents, they're the ones who tell us who we are and how we can look after each other, so it's a, a joint custodianship. Our current civilization is still on the upper path. But in recent years, there's been a growing recognition of the great value of indigenous knowledge in solving environmental problems. For example, some West Coast tribes have started to manage wildfire-prone areas with controlled burns. They're bringing back this traditional practice as a way to manage forest fire in the future. 
and indigenous communities themselves are working together to amplify their voices. In 2017, 13 indigenous elders gathered in Hawaii to co-create a message for all mankind. The event was captured in a short film called Wisdom Weavers of the World. We are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the ones. Each and every one of you have a sacred mission given to you by the spirit that lives in all things. If you touch and get your instruction from your heart. And just like the Hopi prophecy rock, the elders concluded that the real change the earth so desperately needs must come from within. And that's the message that I'm bringing from the elders that we must tell the people today. So now we need to know who's going to bring about justice, peace, equality, human rights to native people.